Hello everyone, you're watching Guns Gear and Outdoors Alaska. My name is Alan and today I'm going to be doing a review of my Winchester model 1873. This is one of the new ones made by Moroku in Japan and I really like this gun but before I talk about it let's take a few shots. Got an 8 inch piece of steel about 50 yards downrange. Let's see if I can hit it. That's it. 10 shots of 357 Magnum. Let's shoot some more. This gun shoots really good with 38 specials too. They're really fun to shoot at the range. Here's some Remington 125 grain plus P uh, hollow points. It's just, it's barely any more recoil than a 22 shooting 30 specials in here. It's really fun. Really pleasant. You might have saw a few times during the intro where the lever got kind of stiff. That hasn't happened to me before with this gun, but I am shooting this Hornady Leverlution ammo with the little rubber tip. I'm shooting it up because I don't really like it. I think it's kind of gimmicky. Maybe that was one of the reasons why the lever's a little stiff, but every other cartridge of uh, 357 Magnum or 38 Special I've tried has worked really well. I think my favorite factory round is the 180 grain HSM bear load. They shoot really good out of this gun. Maybe two inches, two and a half inches at 100 yards. And they cycle super smooth, but yeah, I'm gonna shoot these up. I'm not a huge fan. Gotta wait for it to quit swinging. But this 1873 action is just buttery smooth. It makes you want to shoot it fast. It's a lot different than like a 92 or a 94. Oh. All right. Let's get into the features of the gun. I really always wanted one of these. I think the toggle link action is really cool. Really just in its simplicity. I know it gets a lot of flack for not being the strongest action in the world, but for pistol cartridges like this one, works just fine. Like I mentioned before, I got mine chambered in 357 Magnum, and this is what they call the short rifle configuration. It has a steel crescent butt plate and a, a metal nose cap. Let's go ahead and start at the butt plate. The crescent butt plate takes some getting used to. It's not what us as modern shooters are used to using. We're used to putting it in the pocket, the deep part of the shoulder, but the crescent butt plate really kind of sits better on that joint. That's how people shot back in the day. And it works a little better to shoot this one like that, otherwise you're poking yourself in the, in the chest with that sharp toe on the stock. And I don't know if you can tell from there, but the, I, I use this thing. I use it pretty hard and it does okay with it. This isn't just a wall hanger. It's like the originals. It was meant to be used and I think it's great for that. The stock fit and finish is pretty good. No complaints there. One feature you have at the bottom, just like the originals, is a lever lock. So you can turn this, lock the lever in place. But 
The best thing about the 1873, I think, is just the smoothness of the action. That toggle link is just, like I said, meant to be run fast. You just wanna, wanna run it. And that's something when you're shooting, you wanna do, be very deliberate about running the lever and you're not gonna have any issues. And uh, so on the top, you can see that toggle link action. See your bolt coming back, your lifter comes up, your bolt comes back forward, catches the next cartridge. And this sliding dust cover you can put over manually keeps gunk and stuff out of the action. And as soon as you throw the bolt, pushes that dust cover out of, way, out of the way. That's a nice feature of the 1873 that they added back then that the 1866 didn't have. You have your, your King's Gate here. It's pretty nice to use. Some of the edges inside of here on the Moroku are a little bit sharp, but not bad and that wouldn't be too hard to fix. Yeah, your hammer does have a true half cock notch, and that's where you'd want to carry it if you're carrying it with a round in the chamber. So, nothing there. I think they made some design changes in the modern ones, where if your hammer's resting, your firing pin isn't protruding, it's kind of got a little inertial thing. Don't quote me on that, I'm not sure, but I think they made some alterations to the internal design there. But from the user's end, everything's the same. Another thing you're going to want to notice is uh, there's a safety on the lever. The lever has to be squeezed just a little bit for this little bar to clear the trigger. So we can demonstrate here we're clear and we're pointing in a safe direction. If I pull the trigger, nothing happens unless that lever is being squeezed. Then it'll go off. Just something to know. Might notice I have a tang side on mine. It's a uh, marble. I don't really like it. Especially for field use, I'll use it if I'm sitting down at the bench trying to shoot groups. But it does get out of out of whack, just as you're carrying the gun around, gets out of adjustment. It's not on anymore, and that's really frustrating to flip it up and pull it up, and then you're you gotta sit there and mess with it. So I use it to shoot groups. Otherwise, they leave it down. If we come up to the sights, it comes with comes with a set of semi buck horns, kind of old school style, not the greatest sights, but it's original. That's what people used back in the day. And you have a nice front sight with a brass bead on it. I really like that. Like I said, 20 inch barrel, 10 shot magazine tube. And this uh, sling I got on here, it's a no drill sling. I got it from Brass Stacker, I think, if I remember right. And uh, yeah, works pretty good. Didn't have to drill a hole in the stock. And this forend really is too thin to put a conventional sling stud in this just clamps to the magazine tube you can see here i had to make a field repair i lost one of the brass uh, screws on a 16 mile hike so i had to tie a little piece of paracord and that's that's held it ever since just fine so yeah that's the winchester model 1873 from moroku i think this gun's great it's a lot of fun i like taking it out in the winter i wouldn't feel bad and a 357 Magnum in a rifle has a lot more gusto than 357 Magnum in a pistol. I'd shoot a black bear over bait with this any day of the week with a good 158 or 180 grain load. If you live where there's white-tailed deer and you're never not going to shoot over 100 yards from your spot, something like this would be a really fun choice. Get out there and hunt with it. But yeah, these guns are meant to be used, so get them, shoot them, hunt with them. Have a lot of fun, get a get a feeling about what it was like back in the day. This was a really popular rifle. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe if you think I deserve it. And have a good one. Thanks for watching.